Now, the nice thing about this game is that you can create characters here that you can import into the sequel called Eternal Dagger. Um, this is sort of like the fantasy series where if you played Fantasy 1, you can import into Fantasy 2 and then into Fantasy 3. Uh, this is a nice feature back then, back in the 80s. I mean, you're talking about games that uh, were not very sophisticated and allowing you to take a party forward to the next adventure uh, was a bit of a selling point. So, uh, um, anyway, this game starts out in like a, uh, in a town built north of what's left of the uh, city of Argon. And, uh, basically the backstory is that there's this, uh, well, actually the wizard's crown is the whole point of the story. Uh, all the wizards, they wear the crown for a specific amount of time until the constellation Atarius. Ha ha ha. The Atarius get it with the Atari version. Yeah, okay. Yeah, lame old uh, reference there. But that's what it says in the uh, in the backstory. So the constellation Atarius shifts. They give up the crown and they're supposed to pass it on to the next wizard basically Tarman doesn't want to do that takes the crown for his own locks himself in his uh, in his palace his six level palace and uh, puts all sorts of uh, traps and uh, monsters along the way to discourage any uh, party from making an easy raid on it so a lot of this game is really spent building up your party because the starting party that you create even with the ones that you're given uh, they're not very good they, they, they start out with pretty low skills so you gotta spend a lot of your time just creating and building up your party so that you can actually have a chance to survive in the uh, third and fourth dungeons uh, you run into those two early you're basically dead meat and about a minute or so, maybe even less, depending on whether or not you wanted to do quick combat. Uh, quick combat and tactical combat, those were the combat options offered by the game. Uh, you definitely need to learn how to do tactical combat, though, in this game, because uh, if you learn to fight the golems, you're not going to win it in quick combat. They will kill you easily. So, um, I'll have to have a d more detailed discussion about the gums when I reach that point, but that probably won't be for quite some time. Uh, my intention is not to do an entire let's play of this game from start to finish. I'm just going to kind of go into an overview, create the characters, e explain the skills. Uh, I might give you a, uh, overview of like a tactical comment once the skills of the characters get to like about 50 to 100 or so I will definitely uh, document a nighttime fight which uh, lasts from of course uh, you know once you know, the sun sets to dawn and in this game that takes a while for dawn to roll around so if you're stuck outside the city uh, they had a couple options. You could run for a temple, uh, but the temple required a password to get in. So if you didn't know the password, uh, you were in a little bit of problem. And the temple is also guarded by undead. So if you're a little bit low in terms of your party, and you have priests or whatever, and they can't turn undead, well, that's going to be a bit of a problem. You're just going to be sticking by the temple all the time, and uh, sooner or later, if your party is is just not prepared, they're, they'll likely die uh, outside if, if you just don't have good enough skills. Um, now, you can wander around wherever you want in the game, within limits, of course. There were about, let's see, uh, one, two, six, seven, about eight screens. Uh, for the map. That's it. Uh, the uh, 
the main town Argon was divided into about uh, six sections and then south of Argon there was like this kind of wooded area that you can go to and explore a little bit uh, it also has the little Easter egg of the wood spilling out the uh, the designers of the game so yeah they threw in a little Easter egg uh, uh, there's also uh, oh yeah there's a lot of uh, weird uh, monsters that you're gonna you can run into into this game uh, one of the more weird ones that I've run into I think I've seen armies uh, uh, you don't want to run into them because that's like eight of your guys against like over a thousand of the enemy and you'll never survive that uh, I'm not even too sure if you could survive it with uh, doing a blessing I think you might get through it a little bit, but that would probably take forever. And uh, I'm sure that the treasure, if you survive it, would be probably, uh, or at least you would hope anyway, would be pretty uh, substantial. You know, you fighting off against about a thousand guys or whatever. But uh, uh, I never, I never successfully uh, defeated an army. Uh, what else? Uh, I know I'm thinking. Uh, oh yeah, there is a uh, there's a uh, review of this game in Computer Gaming World in the October, actually September October, nineteen eighty six. Uh, in that edition. Scorpia, whose uh, site, her, uh, she had a, a kind of commentary review site uh, that just unfortunately uh, has closed its doors, it looks like, permanently this year. But she did a re uh, multi page review on this game and she kind of complained that it was, oh, it's all hack and slash, not very many puzzles, the puzzles are pretty simple. Uh, I could agree with that. There's not really much to this game. It's all basically build up. Uh, the sequel is a, a little bit more detailed. It goes into uh, some of the background history and some other things uh, in regards to this game. I think the sequel is uh, the much better of the two between Wizard's Crumb and Eternal Digger. But the intention is to create a party here, and we're going to crush all resistance and eternal dagger. Now, to do this, uh, you got to know the system, and you got to know how the system works. So, uh, eternal dagger would let you import any party of your choosing. And the best party, at least in my opinion, is a split between sorcerers and priests. 